Okay, welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you, Deborah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. I'm Sarah Flood, and I'm here to uh, give a few announcements and introduce our speaker for today. So first of all, um, the IPUMS and the Life Course Center are co-sponsoring a conference next summer on harnessing the power of linked data. So there are flyers over there on the table. Please take one if you are interested. Uh, abstract submissions closes February 1st. So you're going to hear about this a couple of times um, before then. Also, we are accepting applications for the MPC POP Scholars Program. Uh, this year-long program trains new and early stage investigators to write competitive NIH grants. Uh, all U of M faculty and research scientists are welcome to apply, as are our faculty, as are faculty from non-R1 institutions. So priority is given to those who are less than 10 years from completion of their PhD and who have not previously received an NIH R01. Applications are due Monday, November 20th. So you have another week to hear about that too. Uh, and then finally, for announcements, the Life Course Center call for pilot projects is open. We'll be holding an information session on Zoom at 10 a.m. on November 15th for prospective applicants. Find all the details for the call for proposals and the information session on our website. All right, now I'm happy to introduce my colleague, Anna Bulgren. Uh, Anna is a senior research scientist at IPUMS and project manager for IPUMS Mix, which we're going to hear about in just a few minutes. Anna is an alumna of the MPC POP Studies Training Program, and she worked for several years as a graduate research assistant on IPUMS International before taking over IPUMS Mix. Her primary research interests are on the design and production of demographic data in developing countries with a focus on children and youth. Uh, join me in welcoming Anna, and here is your mug. Thank you. Good. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Sarah, for that introduction. I am really excited about this mug after watching so many of these over so many years. This is my very first mug, so I'm excited. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so I'm Anna um, and I am the project manager for IPUMS Mix, which is the newest of the IPUMS data collections. And it just launched last month. So it's hot off the press, still very new. And I'm really excited to sort of share the details of what it is in IPUMS Mix and some unique features that make it different from other IPUMS projects. I'm gonna start right away with thank yous to funders and partners. The IPUMS Mix is a NICHD grant funded project and we share the great resources at ISRD IPUMS and the Minnesota Population Center by being housed here. Our partner is UNICEF. They are the stewards of the IPM, or the MIX data. And we have a formal partnership with UNICEF to produce IPM's MIX. And I also want to thank all of the partner countries that UNICEF has partnerships with to be the data collectors and the owners of the data. Next thank yous right away are all of the amazing people on the IPM's MIX team, the PIs, Liz Boyle, Miriam King, and Matt Sobeck, the IPM's staff, Shula Sarkar, Meher Munir, and Clint Hyman the different, the awesome IT, IPUMS IT staff, um, who really had to help IPUMS Mix get off the ground, both in the web design and the extract system, which I'll describe later, and members of all of the IPUMS global health teams. Finally, to thank all the students that have worked on this project, Haku and Divya are the current graduate assistants, and Vivian and Rueda are the current undergrads, and many others who have since graduated or taken positions elsewhere. To start, what is MIX? Well, MIX has the lovely name of the Multiple Indicator Cluster Surveys, and these surveys were developed by UNICEF in the 1990s to focus on women and children's health and well-being. The primary goal was to collect data for different indicators, predominantly in low- and middle-income countries, to support data on the reporting of millennial development goal targets and now sustain a sustainable development goal targets. UNICEF has partnerships with 
countries all over the world, all the countries in yellow. They have been collecting, working with countries to collect data for almost 30 years and um, have produced mix surveys in um, 350 different surveys. These mix surveys are typically nationally representative samples. They're a sample of households. The sample size for each of these countries is fairly large at 10,000 to 30,000 households in each country. Um, not all of them are nationally representative, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But this is a fairly standard um, sampling frame using multi-stage cluster sampling of households um, using a frame of a census or another nationally representative sample. This sample design of of households is really similar to the demographic and health surveys, the DHS. And you'll hear me talk about the DHS a lot throughout this because the mix and the DHS do share a lot of similarities, both in structure, um, sample design, and topics. The content of, mix, of a mix survey starts with a household questionnaire because it's a sample of households. And within the sampled households, a household roster is collected. So information on all of the members of that household um, is data is gathered. Um, characteristics about the house itself, the household itself, different water and sanitation, characteristics of the house. And there has been a big effort to collect water quality measures, particularly looking at E. coli in, in the drinking water source. As mix are primarily focused on women and children's health and well-being. The most important data collected is on individual women age 15 to 49, typically of reproductive age. And the information about women is very broadly focuses on her fertility, her birth history, contraceptive and unmet need, and maternal and newborn child health. So the focus on women and her children is really core to what MIX and UNICEF wants to know about. Many samples also interview all men in the household or some subset of men. These are kind of paired um, in age range to the 15 to 49 year old men and different types of information about the men. And this is actually applicable to the women also is about the, the men and women's um, media consumption, information access, sexual behavior, HIV knowledge, uh, domestic violence, and life satisfaction. So these topics are available for men, but also for women. The next kind of data collected by MIX uh, are data on children under five. And this is, again, fit in with the focus on women and children's health and well-being. And these children, there's a lot of different information um, gathered about children's health. Um, fever, malaria, cough, different types of access to medications and access to healthcare facilities. In addition, information on child functioning, early childhood education and child development, anthropometric measures are um, gathered about children's height and weight. And then there's some questions about child discipline for these under five children. Finally, one really unique feature of MIX is the inclusion of adolescent children as a, as a point of emphasis. These five to 17 year olds are often very overlooked in so samples of women and children. Um, and UNICEF has really looked to expand the definition of children as not just being under five, but really throughout the entirety of childhood and into adolescence. Information on these five to 17 year old children includes a literacy and numeracy test administered directly to the child to assess reading and um, math skills, parental involvement in the child's schooling, and child discipline and child labor activities that the, the adolescent child might be uh, engaged in. So overall, these broadly represent all of the different types of data that can be found in a mix, a mix survey. There's a huge number of topics, a really wide range of information available. And um, collectively, these are all available or mostly available for different countries across time. 
All of this information can be downloaded from UNICEF completely for free. It's publicly available. You would go to their website, download the data sets, download the survey reports, and you would get SPSS files of the different data for a particular country. The UNICEF mixed data is really, really rich. However, the PIs on the project, Liz, Matt, and Miriam, looked at this and went, this sounds like something IPMs can help with because downloading individual data from an individual country has some limitations. And thus, IPMs mix was born. IPMs mix provides harmonization for over 900 variables across 88 countries, 200 samples, and over a thousand different data sets. The time span here, and this will help if I spend a little bit of time explaining this right now, it'll help later on. The data come from 2005 all the way up until 2019 or the current day. And every five years about UNICEF rethinks their questionnaire design. They rethink their sample design. Sometimes they add questions, change question wording, um, change variable names, all the sorts of things that make comparability across time and place a little bit complicated. Um, each of these redesigns is considered a round, and these are the rounds that are included in IPMs mix. So we have data in all of the publicly available data in round three, four, five, and six. Like I said, six is the current round, um, though UNICEF did just launch data collection in round seven. So that will be something that IPMs mix will start including as it becomes publicly available. In addition to changes over time, there are changes across country in data. These are the 200 samples included in IPMS mix. And here I'm referring to a sample as a combination of a country and a year. So the Sierra Leone 2005 sample is a different sample from Sierra Leone 2017, which is different from Vietnam 2017. So those are all different samples. And you can see that there's a wide range of countries that are included in IPMS mix, predominantly in low and middle income countries, though not always. And many of the countries do have more than one round or more than one uh, sample. Sometimes this is nationally representative samples taken in different years. Sometimes, as I previewed before, these are subnational. So I, I think about 20% of the samples are subnational. So what do I mean by that? Subnational samples come in two different versions. There are subnational population surveys, which UNICEF has prioritized a specific population that they want to pr produce an, uh, an oversample of that particular population in order to get more detailed information about a given population. So these are most common in the Eastern European countries where there is a national, a national sample is, is conducted, but then also an oversampling of a Roma population so that um, the data is can become representative of the, the Roma population. A second example is the samples that are based in Lebanon are not nationally representative of the population of Lebanon, but instead they are representative of the Palestinians living in refugee camps in Lebanon. The other type of subnational population is there are examples of countries that conduct samples at a subnational geography level. So in Ghana and Thailand, for example, there is a nationally representative sample of the entire country, and then a second sample is drawn of a particular city or region to provide more detailed estimates of that particular city, such as Accra or Bangkok. In the Pakistan and Somalia example, and these are just two examples of many, the samples are done at a, uh, a district or a region level instead of a national level. And all of these different subnational samples are um, have their own set of survey weights and can be weighted, though with some difficulty, um, which I will chat about a little bit later. But those weights are all provided by UNICEF. As I said, the UNICEF mixed data is really rich and valuable. It's really great. 
if, you're, if your research question is looking at one sample, it's really great if you're good at SPSS and if you want all variables. All of the information can be downloaded and it, the data can be matched with the metadata found in the country reports. IPMS mix, on the other hand, is really much better for harmonization across time and place. We currently provide data in Stata data files, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And the biggest limitation of IPMS right now is we only have harmonized approximately 60% of the most common variables. So there might be things that you're interested in that we just don't have yet. We're working towards 100%. As with other IPMS projects, we provide the documented metadata and harmonized geography as additional things to add value to IPMS mix users. So there is a time and a place to use the original UNICEF data, and there's a time that IPMS would be uh, far better for your needs. I'm not gonna go into full details on what is IPMS and where to, how to access the website. Most people in here already know that, um, but I am gonna provide a brief walkthrough of overall IPMS mix looks really similar to all the other IPMS metadata projects. I am gonna highlight a few things that are different about IPMS mix um, in comparison to the other projects. So IPMS mix is found within IPMS Global Health. And this is an umbrella of three different IPMS projects, IPMS DHS, IPMS PMA, and IPMS mix. And I'll talk a little bit more about this later on about why these uh, make sense to have under the IPMS Global Health umbrella. This is the IPMS homepage. No surprises here. Looks very similar to a lot of the other IPMS homepages. And the first place that there is a difference is the registration. In order to access and create an IPMS mix extract, users must go through UNICEF and register for access to the data with UNICEF. This is a fairly simple form, very similar to our own, but I emphasize that IPMS does not control registration or access to IPMS mix. That's all done through UNICEF and um, users must start there. Back to the homepage. The second thing um, after registering that you would want to do is start browsing the data. And you would be faced with this choose your unit of analysis screen right off the bat. Now, these different units of analysis, analyses, um, look pretty familiar, and that's because I've already talked about them when I described all the different content of what a mixed survey includes. In this example, I'll walk through the children zero to four unit of analysis, and this is where you would find data on the children zero to four. This format looks really similar to the IPMS DHS um, variable selection page, um, but not all IPMS metadata projects have, have a page like this. Uh, selecting variables and browsing variables is very similar. Sample selection looks fairly familiar. Again, samples being a country year combination and we've divided them into rounds because there are often a lot of similarities within a round compared to across time. So doing analysis with all of the round six samples is actually um, pretty comparable most of the time. After selecting samples, selecting variables looks pretty familiar. Um, same sort of layout, creating a data card. No surprises here, everything is looking pretty good. However, when you go to submit your extract request, we hit another difference. You can see here, there's not that many options. There's not very much to click on or select. And this is very deliberately done because IPMS mix does not disseminate mix data. This sounds a little in counterintuitive because IPMS is all about data dissemination. However, due to our partnership with UNICEF, we do not have permission to disseminate data. Only UNICEF can do that due to the par partnership agreements they have with all of those individual countries. Therefore, we had to take a little bit of a creative approach and we have decided to provide users custom Stata files that run or custom syntax files that run in Stata so that the harmonization 
actually occurs on the user's own computer. So this is how we, we do not disseminate data. Um, but yet users can still have a file that has the IPUM's harmonization treatment to it. Let me walk through how this works um, and try to convince you that it's not all that much extra work for a user. So back to this extract request page. When you hit submit extract, this is the download page. Again, pretty straight, pretty stripped down, not that many options because again, there, we aren't disseminating data. So this is um, the process that a user would go through. And you'd click this big green button that says download from UNICEF. You'd also get a big old pop-up that says that you are going to UNICEF to download the data. Again, we cannot, down, we cannot provide the data. Users must go to UNICEF to download the data. The data that's downloaded from UNICEF is still in a format that can be matched with the IPUM's paired syntax. So you can't just go and download one of those SPSS files and then try to run IPUM's syntax against that. That's not going to work. You still have to download an IPUM's version of the UNICEF data, but you are going to UNICEF to get it. This data provides the original unaltered data files and syntax files in addition to an umbrella do file. In this case, the example 0012 is the umbrella do file. This is what it looks like. Once users have opened Stata, navigated to the right folders and unzipped everything, you click run. After you click run, the program runs and you are left with a data file with only the countries you're interested in and only the variables you selected in your extract. This data set created by the user looks like the other data that you would get from any other IPMS project. The only difference is you had to click run on your own computer. From here, you can export this into a different statistical package if that's what you are more comfortable in, or you can just start your analysis right here in Stata. Uh, I will talk a little bit at the end that we are looking to move beyond Stata. This is just the place that we started. The next thing I'm going to talk about is linking across units. The, as a result of not being able to disseminate data or alter data, we can only provide what UNICEF provides um, in ways that UNICEF provides it. So data here in the individual units or the different mm, data files aren't linked together. So in this situation, the children aren't linked to the women, they aren't linked to the household or the household members. This is not done by UNICEF and therefore it's not done by us. We want to, we have created user guides for the web um, to help make this process easier and I'll show an example of what this would look like. Another note, this particular detail is different from IPMS DHS, which is able to link everything for users um, during the extract process. So linking isn't actually all that complicated. You would wanna put the household questionnaire onto the household members using a household ID. And then you can link all of the different people in the household onto that household members using a unique person ID. Therefore, you have a lot of flexibility in what units you link between each other. And this can be really powerful because it allows different combinations of people to be linked to different people in the household. So let's say you, want, you wanted to study children and you wanted to know about their parents. Well, through the household members, you can link to their parents. Or if you wanted to know, if your research question was about women and you wanted to know the outcomes of her children, you can link an, a woman through the household members to her children. So all of these things are possible and they're really, really rich different combinations. It's just a little bit more work on the user's part to have to do all these things on their own computer. And again, this is a limitation that we have because of our dissemination system and we're working to provide as many tutorials and user guides as possible to users to make this a lot less scary than it actually is. 
So let me give some examples of work that we've been doing at IPM's Mix to demonstrate all of these, how to use different data across different units um, to conduct research. One of the research projects that's being um, led by Meher Munir, who's a data analyst on the IPM's Mix project, looks at paternal involvement in child rearing activities to predict life satisfaction of mothers to under five children. So to answer this question, Meher needed life satisfaction information from the women and child development activities from the children, which included information on did the child's father play, sing, read, various activities to the child. Linking these two things together, Meher has been able to produce this figure, which is an example from 30 different countries in round six, um, that show that as the number of activities a father does with the child increases, a mother's life satisfaction or her overall happiness with her life, um, the proportion gets uh, higher for very happy and somewhat happy. Another example um, being led by Haku Bo, a graduate assistant on the IPMS team, looks at how children five to 17 who are involved with water fetching activities in the household. Uh, how children age five to 17 are involved in water fetching activities within a household. For this research, um, we needed to look at the five to 17 year olds to get information on child labor and water fetching. We needed to look at household characteristics to look at water access, drinking water availability. And we needed to look at the household roster to get information about the child's, the adolescent child's mother and father and also demographic information on the primary water fetcher in the household. So all of these different, um, all of this different information can be used uh, in combination with each other to answer really rich research questions. And here is an example of what Haku has produced um, that shows across different countries in round six in Africa, the proportion of sampled children who do and do not fetch water. These are just Preliminary examples of some other really interesting questions that can be asked um, using IPM's mix. And so far, these two examples have really only demonstrated mixed data. But in this second to last section here, I'm going to talk about how we might think about IPM's mix fitting into the broader IPM's global health data projects. Again, the IPM's global health data projects include. Um, the Demographic and Health Surveys, IPMS CHS, and Performance Monitoring for Action, IPMS PMA, along with IPMS Mix. The primary focus of these three data collections are maternal and newborn child health, reproductive health, and family, uh, family planning practices. And these three projects do share a lot of similarities. For example, each of these three uh, IPM's projects includes really rich information on women of reproductive age, children zero to four, and household members who live in the households with those women and children. Two of the three projects also include information on birth history, female genital cutting, men, and um, DHS and PMA have really, really interesting data on calendar data, which has been presented on elsewhere. And there are some really unique features of each of these three projects, including the adolescents in the mix, the IPM's mix data collection, and PMA having information on service delivery points uh, for healthcare use for within the same community that a woman lives, uh, an infant panel, and PMA has longitudinal data. So when a researcher, when a researcher who's interested in global health data is interested in using IPMS, there is a lot of different places that they could start. And we at IPMS Global Health have worked really hard to try to figure out what's the best project for, an, for the research question that someone might be interested in. Where should they go if they're interested in a particular topic or what kind of data might be available in one project but not the other? Because that really matters where you start. The other place that you, that a researcher interested in global health data would want to know about 
is which countries are available. And this map shows countries in blue that only IPMS mix has, countries in red that only IPMS DHS has, but there's a good number of countries in purple that both projects have. And so this can really change how a researcher might be thinking about their particular global health research question. The other element that a researcher would want to think about when deciding which IPM's global health project that they would want to start with is thinking about the element of time. The IPM's DHS includes samples that start in the 1980s um, to the present day, and MIX only goes back to 2005 to the present day. So if you're looking at a particular country over many, many years, maybe IPM's DHS will have a longer time series so that you could look at changes over time in ways that IPM's mix just doesn't have the, the longevity for. All of this leads to some, a really obvious next question. With so many similarities, why can't we just pool across projects? The topics are really similar, the countries are really similar, the time frame is really similar. What sort of interesting questions can we ask if we start pooling across projects? And we at IPM's Global Health have started digging into just this. One example, um, led by Devin Christensen, looks at the prevalence of physical intimate partner violence experienced in Zimbabwe. And you can see here that the first three um, years all come from DHS, but we were able to expand the analysis into 2019 by adding in the mixed data, um, showing just the subnational variations in intimate partner violence over time in Zimbabwe. Another example that was led by uh, graduate student Divya Pande at IPM's Mix was looking at open defecation and infant mortality rates for uh, subnational regions of the intergangetic plain, which is the areas of Bangladesh, India, and Nepal that border the Ganges River. And using uh, DHS and Mix, these triangles indicate the mix samples. So by adding in Bangladesh 2019, we were able to extend the time series for Bangladesh for um, into in, to, to make it line up better with the data that we had available for India and Nepal. So this is just another way of expanding on a time series, not just for one country, but within a group of countries. However, We've learned a lot as we've started working on these interoperable projects. Fundamentally, there are some differences in the way the sample was designed and collected. One really basic example is that in DHS, the children zero to four are only the biological children of women in the household, compared to MIX that has data on all children in the household. If this is important to your research question, it's a really important distinction. It's something you have to know about before you can move forward when looking at data across these two, these two projects. Other issues of comparability are perhaps a little more obvious to IPM's uh, researchers. Variable names and codes, even among IPM's, do change. These TV and television are IPM's given variable names, and the two projects chose to do them differently. So right, up, right away, when you're pooling across two completely different projects that were developed independently, there's the same sort of comparability issue that you would have if looking at independent samples in the same project. Um, variable universes, question wording differ across the projects, and all of those things need really careful consideration in order to move forward with a project that uses multiple IPM's global health data sets. And finally, um, the spatial geography might not be comparable across the two projects, or it might just not be what you're looking for within a given research project. Part of this is that the geographic crosswalks that can link across data projects just aren't complete for MIX. We haven't been able to get to that yet, given how new the project is. And I'm gonna show, a really simple, or I'm going to show an example of 
where geography might matter. Thinking back to that, um, the research project on the intergangetic plane, this map um, shows this region in orange for Nepal is the region that was available for DHS. It was the region that we wanted to include in our analysis because it borders the, the uh, Ganges River. This was the map that was available for mix. And you can, this, these orange circles kind of show that the boundaries available for the 2019 Nepal really don't look anything like those boundaries in orange from DHS. The main takeaway here is we wanted to include Nepal 2019, but we needed a subnational geography that matched and it didn't. And so we could not use this sample in our analysis. All right, wrapping up, what is next for IPAMS mix? We have, uh, we're about a month old. We've just had our first data release and we're already thinking about our next data release. And in that, we are hoping to expand to include new variables on new topics, including child labor, alcohol, victimization, breastfeeding, different types of energy use and um, household ass assets and livestock. And we are going to expand to these um, new samples that have since been released by UNICEF. So continuing to expand our, not only our variables, but our samples. In addition, we are working on different types of workshops and webinars to help guide users through the, the, the nuance of IPMS mix and hopefully introduce some of the UNICEF users to the other IPMS data collections. We are developing video tutorials to walk users through this and we are developing um, user notes on specifically tricky aspects of using the mixed data and making sure that we are helping support uh, IPMS mix users make knowledgeable decisions on how they are conducting their research. In the longer term future, we are looking to expand further back in time. So uh, UNICEF does have publicly available data from 2000 to 2005, and we're hoping to start making that start to make that available to IPMS users. We are hoping to expand beyond Stata to other softwares, so that that syntax process of the extract of creating an extract can be more um, uh, accessible to people who don't use Stata or don't have access to such an extensive software. We're looking to expand our spatial geography and we're gonna keep working on this interoperability among the global health projects idea because it, we really do think that that is um, such a strong benefit of not only IPMS mix, but really all of the IPMS global health projects is being able to look at so many more countries across so many more years and get really, really detailed information about a lot of really cool topics. So that's, please go to our website, please create an extract. We're looking for users and I can take questions. And if you're in the room and gonna ask a question, we ask that you wait for the microphone so the people online can hear. Lindsay's in charge. Thank you so much, Anna. This is so great. I, I, uh, the, the potential for this, for cross-national research is very high and very great. My question is, and this is part of my ignorance around IPMS, uh, the, like what is available to bridge uh, the, I need data to to do this is what researchers are thinking about. And IPMS has so many data sets. Do you, the information you provided here seems like it would be so useful as like a brief, like which data set should I use if I'm interested in global health, mix versus, uh, you know, DHS versus. So do you have, it, it, is there such a like intro brief that that you guys provide on IPMS that would be good for this global health maternal and child health piece but also other IPMS data we don't have anything published in brief format um we have been giving 
webinars to global health audiences and in those really combining efforts and and giving global health workshops and webinars so that it's a little bit of every project and trying to introduce users at different um, conferences to all three of the projects. And in many cases, we do also pair with IPMS International um, and IHGIS to provide not just the global health, but all of the international data. Um, I like the idea of a brief. I think that we can. <laughs> like the main things that researchers are looking for, like maps, time, yep. uh, the the universe of the sample or who is in it. And like, yep. you could do that in a really short, brief way. Yeah, yeah beautiful, like it. beautiful work. And thank you to Quinn for creating a lot of the maps that you saw today. The question, the question is which of the webinars are available? Well, we did a webinar last week, so we're still working on getting the, um, it will eventually, yes, the webinars that we have done and will do will be posted on the uh, IPUM's support page and the IPUM's YouTube page and um, however, whatever types of resources are available. Yes, slides will be available too. Hey, um, I am also a huge fan of the many units of analysis that Mix has, and I just it's a personal question as well that I'm interested on what the births uh, unit of analysis, I kind of saw it quickly on one of the slides. Uh, if you could just quick touch on what that means. Yeah. So births in IPM's mix and mix in general refer to um, in the women's interview, she is for some samples, not all, asked to start with her most recent birth and give some information about that most recent birth, the age of the child, sex of the child, is the child still alive, um, is the child living with her, and then moving on to the her second youngest birth and her third youngest birth. And so it's a complete history of all of the births to a particular woman. So it's a separate unit of analysis because the observations are each birth um, alive or no longer alive, and that could be then matched to the women or into the household members. So you could find out, um, well, if the child is no longer living, you wouldn't see that child in the household, but the living children, you would be able to then get more information about birth spacing and things like that. I think the uh, harmonization of these variables across countries is awesome. But what I'm wondering about it is that it sounds like it is a little clunky to go to look at the children and the mother or are these different subgroups and is there any likelihood that UNICEF might change its policy so that you could link these it's a possibility however Liz oh I'm sorry I think eventually we could probably do that with supplemental coding yeah so that we don't have to get a we don't have to um, get, permission. get permission. That would be my hope. Yeah. So if you would, with some supplemental programming, the idea would be you could download the two two different extracts, which is a little clunky. But then we would then provide the the programming to then do the linkage um, based on what you downloaded. It's a future request um, that we yeah, have on our agenda. Hey, Hannah, nice presentation. Um, do you have you figured out how UNICEF decides which countries to survey? We at Epum's Mix have no control over which countries UNICEF has included in their data, nor do we have any control over which files are publicly available. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about how they select countries. Um, Liz might. <laughs> Oh, a little bit about. Uh, so I don't think it's it's entirely the case. I mean, it's the countries that want UNICEF's help to do data analysis, but it does tend to have countries that, uh, like, don't get along with the U.S. that well. So, like former communist countries, um, things like that, who don't really want to work in the DHS because they don't want to work through USAID. So 
that that is one group, but that's certainly not the whole group. There's a lot of overlap. Um, I, I was going to ask about the, um, again, about the linking, because that is just so, so cool and interesting. Um, are there, are there linking keys in the files where you can like see what a mother's number is in the child's file and you, and then you can go to the mother's of uh, the women's file and, and see, you know, her mother code, or do you have to bring in the household, um, member data set as well in order to do the linking? So in that particular example, it would depend on how specific you or your research question is. Mm -hmm. So the children do have the line number of the mother or guardian, whoever answered the questionnaire on behalf of the children. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it is the mother, but not always. So if that's what you care about, then that could be enough to link directly to the woman. However, if you link through the household members, you can get the actual line number of the biological mother and the biological father. Mm -hmm. So depends on how much accuracy you want. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, um, and it does make it easier if you go through the household member file for specific things like, um, uh, yeah, the, the, it makes it easier to go through the household member file. It's not necessary, but I would recommend it if you want okay. precision. Okay. Good to know. Do you have information on how, how many people are complying with a survey? Like, right, it's a, it's a survey, no, whatever, non-respondent question. Yeah, it's, um, per the reports that are published by UNICEF, it's, Pretty much 95% of households are found, and then of the households that are found, it's about that same amount of women in the household who, who are found. There is a variable that is, for every unit of analysis, there's a variable about the result. Uh, was it a completed interview? Was it a partially completed interview? Was it a refused interview? And so that information as long as you can find the household, you can you can look at that information on how many of the individuals in that household actually then followed through. But it is very fairly high, um, just from my reading through the reports over many years. Depends on the country a little bit, but typically I've seen things in the upper ninety percent. Thanks for the presentation, Anna, and congratulations. Um, I'm just wondering what UNICEF or the mixed download area is doing to promote the fact that IPMS has a harmonized version and or what their future plans are there. Yes, there is a promise from UNICEF to post a news announcement. We've been working with them to get a news announcement um, published within the next few weeks. And UNICEF has also is also planning on having a link to IPAM's mix from that downloads page um, so that it would be sort of visible there. Um, and as of this morning, I was just invited to give a webinar at UNICEF. So hopefully that will continue to expand our, our partnership. Um, the data we are producing, uh, the harmonized data we're producing for IPAM's mix, we are also providing to UNICEF to be the foundation of a tabulator that they're producing. So it's a very mutually beneficial partnership that we have with UNICEF. And I'd, I'd like to hear your explanation for why uh, DHS and MIX have different variable names. <laughs> I think I, I have my own thoughts, but uh, I'm curious. Many of the variables were Many of the variables that we created at IPAM's mix, we did try to follow the IPAM's DHS variable naming convention. Um, however, as there are differences in individual variables, it can often be actually misleading if we did name them the same. So say a variable on alcohol consumption, perhaps in one of the in mix, it's about how frequently 
do you consume alcohol? Often, never, rarely. But in the other project, a same kind of concept might be just, do you consume alcohol, yes or no? And so keeping those as separate variable names to prevent users from combining them together absentmindedly um, can help protect against um, pooling in un uncomparable, incomparable ways. Um, Stupidity. <laughs> I wanted to add one one more thought that I think is something that you glided past, you alluded to it, but I would also add that that we have to keep UNICEF happy yes. because more than any of our other projects, I think this is really a collaboration. I mean, we have to go through them to get the data onto their website and their opinions about things matter a lot more than they do on your typical IPMS project. So you go messing with their variable names, they're not thrilled, but they yeah. accept it. But And it's because and, DHS is an, uh, both DHS program is a longer running project and IPMS DHS is a longer running project. Converting everything to a DHS format doesn't really preserve the unique features that UNICEF has developed. So there is definitely a sense of wanting to keep um, some individuality of the two data projects. The interoperability discussion that we're having amongst the IPMS global health team is to sort of sidestep that entire issue and create new variables with new names that are in common across the projects. Things that we can be easily identified by uh, an underscore IPMS or an underscore global health so that it's a distinct set of variables that is commonly coded and comparable across multiple projects um, so that we can kind of preserve variable names in multiple places. Anna, thanks for the presentation. Um, I know you said that the data are generally nationally representative. Um, but then you did show some examples with subnational units identified. So just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the subnational geography that would be available in a represent nationally representative sample and how reliable it might be or not be at subnational levels. Yeah. So for most for most nationally representative samples, a first level geography, a, a region, a state, a district is available for most samples. Um, that are nationally representative. Some countries have second uh, level geography available, but that's a very small group of um, countries that would have second level. And those have all been harmonized across um, time within that country. For the subnational geographies, where it's a particular state or a particular region, those are included as the, because they're representative at that state or region, um, they, they have the same subnational geography, or they have the same footprints as the national surveys. And so those can be made available. The subnational populations, the Roma and the um, refugees, because it's a national sample of a subnational population, the geographies um, can't be produced in the same way. So those do not have um, geographies in the same way. Cool. Thanks, Quinn. Yeah, I've got a question about geography too. Um, so you mentioned that the mixed geography doesn't match the DHS geography, but you do have the um, you do have the harmonized common footprint across uh, the national samples in mix, right? And then also, do you have a um, a geography variable like an IPMS International that goes, that has all those subnational units as a single variable? Or is that something you're... We do not yet. That's uh, on the short list of things that are coming soon. Okay, great. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's the, the geographic, the subnational geographies are what the countries and what UNICEF have developed. And so within a given, um, a given sample, it could it could vary from DHS because it's just a different geography or it could vary from a previous year be because that's just what the countries give us. And the geography team of Shula and Quinn do a great job of harmonizing 
um, across time. And um, the hope is to, to start creating some of those future crosswalks to then crosswalk across projects. Um, but we're still new, we're still working on things. All right, if there are no other questions. Let's thank Anna again and And, and do reach out to Anna if you have any questions about mix. Um, I've been in her shoes and I know that she would love to hear from you. So yes, yes, we need users. <laughs> <laughs>